So hello everybody. Let's see what we covered in the previous uh, part. That is part 1.4 of the chapter one, heredity and evolution. So we saw what are connecting links. We saw a few examples of it. Then we saw what is embryological evidences, and then we summarized the evidences of evolution. Okay. So let's go on to the next part. Okay. Let's see. Let's browse through what we did in part 1.4 so that we can refresh our memory and get ready for the next half that is going to come. Okay, so in part 1.4, as I said, we saw what are connecting links. Uh, we saw that the connecting link occurs between Annelida, Arthropoda, reptiles, and mammals. Okay, this is something that is there to come in your chapter 6. Okay, uh, also we saw that peripatus is a connecting link between the Annelida, class Annelida, and Arthropoda or the animal kingdom. Next, we also saw the duck bill platypus being an example, uh, being a connecting link between the reptiles and the mammals and how lungfish shows similar qualities of an of a amphibian. Okay, let's go. Then we saw embryological evidence, how in the initial stages, all organisms show very, very, very extreme, like extreme similarities. These similarities goes on decreasing as they grow. Okay, but this extreme similarity show that they come from the same origin then next slide we understood about the evidences of evolution we summarized them that is morphological anatomical evidence vestigial organs paleontological evidence connecting lens embryological evidence how all of them say that we have evolved or come from, our origin is the same let's see some theories uh, that were discussed okay so in the next part we're going to now we're starting with Detailed explanation and solution for science to chapter one, heredity and evolution for grade 10. Okay, so we are going to do now we're going to deal in detail part 1.5. What are going to what are we going to see? We're going to see Darwin's theory of natural selection. If you'll remember in the very beginning, that is part 1.1, we have dealt with theory of evolution. Okay, how we understood that the genes and mutation of genes causes is one of the reasons why evolution has occurred we're going to see how what what helps the organism to sustain what has helped them to stay till today how they are one and they still exist on planet earth okay how did that occur so darwin has his theory uh, a scientist lamarck he has this theory is known as the marxism and then we see what is what is speciation and what is responsible for speciation why it has occurred Let's start with Darwin, Darwin's theory of natural selection. So kids, uh, it's going to be a little theoretical. I hope you all don't get bored. It's not as picturesque as the other lessons. Uh, uh, let's see, I'll try to keep it as interesting and possible uh, as possible. Uh, it's a lot of theory, but I've tried to minimalize it so that we can just get the keywords, okay? So let me first read it and then we will explain. Darwin's theory of natural selection. He collected innumerable species specimens of plants and animals and depending upon the observations of those specimens, he published the theory of natural selection. For it preaches survival of the fittest. Darwin's book in his book called Origin of the Species. Charles Darwin had collected innumerable specimens of plants and animals. Depending upon the observations of those specimens, compete with each other in a life-threatening manner only those organisms sustain which show modification essential for winning. Natural selection also plays an important role because natural nature selects only those organisms which are fit to live and the rest perish. Sustaining and selected organism can perform reproduction. Now let's understand this in a stepwise manner. Okay, I've just put down the points which I thought important for explaining you the this. The, the name itself, theory of natural selection. As I told you, nature selects the fittest amongst all. The ones who are fittest, they, they sustain, they reproduce, and they, they help their species to grow. The ones which cannot perish. Okay. So what? how did Darwin come to the conclusion? He collected innumerable things, many, many specimens of plants and animals, different kind of them. He observed them over a period of time. They saw how they compete with each other okay in life-threatening environments so what can be the life-threatening environment such as uh, 
there is less of water there is less of food but yes they fight with each other whoever is the strongest survives so that's what he said they compete with each other in life threatening environment and he made observation about those species and he said that he preached or he said that the fittest will survive it known as survival of the fittest where did he publish this in his book origin of species okay so he did all this by collecting a number of so it is not one but innumerable specimens of plants and animals both okay now what did he say only those organisms which show modifications essential for winning okay he said that yes they need to modify themselves in order to survive on this planet earth okay he also said that natural selection also plays an important role so nature selects the fittest okay so uh, nature means you can say talk about immunity of an organism okay natural naturally what things make you fit okay they help you to live on fit to live they declare you fit to live and the rest perish sustaining means uh, sustain so not only surviving but you live a healthy life it's called as sustaining and selecting organisms can perform reproduction so that they are generations so from one generation to the other generation to the other generation it can go on and go on and it can take its species ahead okay so that was told by darwin let's see did he say something more or no yeah so that's all what darwin said but what were the main objections okay many people had objection see if you make a theory it will be counter attack or if it is really good uh it will be counteract no matter what it will be and if it is very very good you obviously your theory will be proved and it will be used for generations to come he kept uh what what were the main objections what does darwin's theory not explain so not only factor so not uh what did they say that it was not the only factor responsible for evolution what was not only the factor that is survival of the fittest okay the is not the only factor that is responsible for evolution there were many other factors which was proved by other scientists it did not mention any explanation about use, useful or useless modification so what he said that they have to modify their body they have to modify their body in order to survive or win but he did not tell okay he did not explain that how these modifications came about or how they were considered useful or useless moreover no explanation about slow uh, how about changes whether they were slow or abrupt changes whether they happened over a small period of time or longer period of time he did not explain these changes so these were the three main objections about darwin's theory of natural selection see now kids uh, this i have just included something from the internet okay so this is lamarck just try to observe it in the next slide we are going to see the explanation so in this you can uh, observe so when i explain further you will understand see these giraffes the trees also short okay the giraffes are not that tall and they are having uh, they are eating the leaves from here okay what happens is the trees go taller the giraffes have to stretch their neck to eat the leaves from here trees grow more taller giraffes have to stretch stretch their necks even further to eat this eat these leaves so what did lamarck say that because of this habit of these giraffes to you know stretch their necks or stretch their bodies in order to survive or order to eat the trees that's why they developed this long neck that they have okay this was lamarck's theory we'll see some more examples of lamarck but as of now this now how uh, why is this picture we have to just understand what darwin is saying so in this case what darwin said was yes there were giraffes of all sizes that's what he says okay there were giraffes of all sizes small uh, uh, sorry short and tall both okay uh, as the trees went on becoming higher the smaller ones perished the shorter ones perished the taller ones survived okay that's what darwin says okay and lamarck had said it's not like that Uh, these only these guys only evolved okay because of their habit let's see what lamarck is saying this is just in comparison in case you want to explain the theories further okay how they are different so what lamarck is saying they use their particular part of the body okay according to 
the environment and that's how modifications occurred darwin said that only the fittest survive he did not talk about these modification and all which is being said over here he did not talk about the usefulness use uselessness about nor did he say how the changes occurred but he just said that the fittest survived okay so if you want to remember how okay let's see what lamarck said in detail so write a short uh, so it's also a textbook uh, it's also a textbook answer that is textbook answer 4a write a short note on lamarckism based on the information known to you so let me just read it first and then i'll explain jean baptist lamarck proposed that morphological changes occur in living organisms are responsible for evolution okay so the morphological changes that occur in human organisms are responsible for the evolution the reason behind these morphological changes is activities or laziness of the organism and he called the concept the principle of use or disuse of organs lamarck explained that the neck of a giraffe has become too long due to the browsing on leaves of tall plants by extending their neck for several generations similarly the shoulders of an iron smith have become very strong due to frequent hammering movements wings of the birds like ostrich and emu have become weak due to no use so what did lamarck said that these morphological changes occurring occurring in living organisms are responsible so these morphological changes occurring in living organism are responsible for evolution they are responsible for evolution okay what was the reason behind these morphological changes he said okay uh, their necks are becoming longer and longer but what is the reason behind this morphological change as i told you uh, earlier what did he say activities or laziness so since the giraffe kept using his neck he kept extending its neck so that it could eat the leaves from the top of a tall tree its neck kept on the length of its neck kept on increasing so this he talks about use or disuse of organs he explained one of the explanation was the neck of the giraffe it became too long due to browsing of leaves of tall plants next was he talking about shoulders of iron smith he says that iron smith have strong shoulders uh, the ones who make so now in the olden days they cast this now how we have machines to make vessels and and stuff like that in the previous uh, generations they didn't have there were iron smiths who used to hit the metals with the uh, hammers and stuff like that so their shoulders became strong okay similarly the wings of birds like ostrich emu have become big due to no use so if i don't know if you've seen the birds but they are very huge birds they have wings but they have become useful useless because these birds did not use them that's what lamarck said let's see some more examples uh legs of a birds like swan and duck have become useful so we saw one two examples of useless now we saw examples of useful so legs of birds like swan and duck have become useful so ducks we already know the ducks and swan they swim in the water so that uh, evolution has occurred among these category of birds because they used that particular part of their body okay all birds cannot swim snakes have lost their legs by modification so reptiles we looked at lizards okay so they say that lamarck deduced that maybe uh, snakes were also somewhat like lizards they stopped using their legs and they found it much easier to crawl so their legs somewhat vanished okay so all this were lamarck so use use or no use of the organs that is activities and laziness of the particular parts of the body rendered it useless or useful that was the marx theory for evolution how we evolved okay all these examples are types of acquired characters and transferred from one generation to the other see now this is the catch away or what he said is not only did they acquire the characteristics but it got transferred from one generation to the other so you can imagine what he saying is that because now here this is suppose your granddad he is very intelligent grandfather used his head so he is very intelligent but you do not but because your grandfather used his head so you are also going to become very intelligent so that is wrong okay that does not happen that's what everybody else said okay so this one thing i'm just pointing out this so that we remember it for why his theory was disapproved
ठीक है ही सेट मॉडिफिकेशन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स पास्ट ऑन लाइक यू नो दे अक्वायर्ड कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स लाइक जिराफ्स गॉट लॉन्ग नेक देन स्वैन एंड कुछ स्विम बिकॉज दे यूज दैट ऑर्गन यस surely so these were acquired characteristics then this theory was uh, named as inheritance of acquired characters of lamarckism but lamarck said one more thing that this characteristics that the one generation acquired it went on to the other generation okay this is what he said let's see what happened with these two theses he said acquired yes everybody said okay but was this true transfer from one generation to the other was it true let's see so here we understand friends that no the theory was disapproved why was it disapproved lamarck proposed that each animal or plant undergo some changes in its life span yes we all agreed to it and those changes are transferred from one generation to the next and such changes occur in next generation too so they say yes this generation this change is going to he said 100% is going to occur in the next generation this theory was called as lamarckism or theory of inheritance acquired characteristics so this I have explained here once again what Lamarck was trying to say. He said that each plant and animal undergoes some changes in its lifespan, and whatever changes it undergoes, they are transferred to the next generation. And this theory he called the theory of inheritance of acquired characters. But what was opposed? Let's see. Development of organs due to specific activities or their degeneration due to no use at all was widely accepted. So yes, people accepted this. because of use or no use this particular part of their bodies they developed okay but they said that these uh, these acquired these acquired character characteristics do not get transferred from generations to generations theek hai so it's like if you are not using your brains now doesn't mean your daughter or kid who uses his brain will turn out to be like you so ठीक है, so there is no evidence of that. Okay, let's go to the next one. Because it has been verified many times, modifications brought in us are not transferred to the new generation. So, let's see. Ah, uh, on a lighter note, whatever modifications where when we talk about uh, uh, the the usefulness or uselessness of our hands, legs, we have remained the same throughout for generation. Our height, weight, everything it passes on. So there was some. Uh, acquired characteristics that we as normal individuals and humans got over a period of time okay but uh, they did not get transferred from one generation to the other okay that's what it's just trying to say that these modifications did not get transferred let's go to the next one okay so now we're going to deal with a totally different topic called speciation okay speciation means now i told you all man is a particular species it evolved from ape yes what was responsible for this journey or what was responsible for the formation of this so the evolution from ape to man and then man forming the planet earth and ruling over it and still ruling over it and we have so much population increasing day by day day and day out oh, this is nothing but your speciation this ape to man to this man taking over the planet earth this is called as speciation this i've given you a very small like a very uh, simple explanation for what is speciation so we will see that there are three things that are responsible for speciation one is geographical characteristics reproduction okay and also genetic variation which we already saw okay so geographical and reproductive isolation of organisms gradually leads to speciation so uh, if the geographical conditions are good we will get uh, so uh, in a previous generation there were a lot of rivers okay so because of rivers then the plants could grow if the plants could grow we could eat if we could eat we took care of everything and we survived so that is geographical characters reproduction obviously uh, okay that we said man and women came together and we produced organism and now we have polluted the entire planet so that is reproductive so these two are 
you will understand that yes speciation can happen with these two factors that is geography khana 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 or this is what we keep on reproduction where humans are reproducing okay so these two are important or have led to speciation there is proof all over around us okay we exist because of this formation of new species of plants and animal is effect of evolution so new species evolve okay we modify from one to the other so you can just i'm just giving a, like a big example you can talk about see horses giraffes uh, then uh, the zebras okay the giraffes have a longer neck so as the mark said it kept on using its neck to eat the the, the tasty leaves from the tall trees so that evolved into one species and one the other species so formation of new species of plants and animals is the effect of evolution species is a group of organism this is now your definition species is a group of organism that can produce fertile individuals through natural reproduction not through something like cloning that uh, the technology has come up with but natural reproduction so that you will known as that is known as a species each species grows in specific geographical condition can you can understand that all organisms cannot grow everywhere or all organisms cannot live everywhere okay so very specifically uh, if we talk about the polar bears and all they cannot exist near the equator or they cannot exist somewhere like maharashtra or india they need to be in the polar regions okay so specific geographical conditions their food habitat is where they live reproductive ability and period is different so everybody has the different conditions and they reproduce and they form their species or they increase their species our genetic variation as we already saw genetic variation is also responsible for the formation of new species from earlier ones so what do we conclude but as explained above geographical and reproductive changes are also responsible and may lead to speciation the speciation may be have three things as i told you if man will survive in the planet if he gets to eat drink and clothe himself so here is geography but he cannot survive alone so man needs a partner you can remember like that theek hai so geography reproduction and then that leads to speciation and if you want your species to survive you need genes so these small small dot indicate genes so you can remember these three things okay next so hope you all enjoyed this part of the chapter series just as you would enjoy your favorite book with a hot cup of tea so e cot that is everyone's cup of tea will bring to you many more such chapter series along with detailed explanation and solution of the exercises that are there in your textbook we wish to bring to you this and more at zero cost so that the hardest chapters become your cup of tea so help us by clicking on this button get notified about our upcoming chapter series also share it to help us define education through equality do message us any doubts that you have on our instagram handle everyone's cup of tea and we promise to answer them thank you and keep sipping bye